two dinosaur skeletons caught in a death grip. Predator and prey, frozen mid-attack for 125 million years. This is the only fossil in the world showing a dinosaur ambush that failed for both hunter and hunted. Their struggle interrupted by something far more lethal than teeth or claws. The outcome was sealed not by strategy, but by fire from above. What catastrophe could stop a professional killer at the peak of its game and erase every rule of the hunt in a split second? A predator built for speed and precision, not brute force, stands at the center of this fossil. Sinoceropteryx prima, barely four feet long from snout to tail tip, carried a skeleton that was more AIR than bone. The walls of its limb bones measured as thin as 0.5 millimeters, with nearly two-thirds of the internal volume hollow. That made each step lighter, each burst from cover faster. Its density hovered between 1.15 and 1.25 grams per cubic centimeter, closer to a modern pigeon than any crocodile. The legs were long and spring-loaded. Femur and tibia, sculpted for acceleration, gave it the ability to launch forward in a single explosive leap. Endurance was not the goal, ambush was. The forelimbs, though short, balanced the body in those split-second attacks, but the real signature weapon sat at the end of each foot, a sickle-shaped claw, arcing between 130 and 145 degrees. No blunt club here, just a blade, 27 to 34 millimeters along the cord with a radius of curvature tight enough to pierce and hold. The tips were narrow, with a width-to-height ratio around 0.4, built to concentrate force at a single point. Microscopic grooves and pits along the claw tips tell a silent story of repetition. Each mark, a scar from a previous kill, evidence that this was no novice. Wear patterns match what is seen in modern raptors, like the secretary bird, whose strike speed can reach three meters per second and whose legs deliver more than 150 newtons of force in a single blow. Sinoceropteryx's claws, sharpened by use, were surgical tools. The skull completed the toolkit. Long and narrow, lined with recurved teeth, it was designed for precision bites rather than crushing power. The jaws could snap shut on a neck or wing in less than a second. Protofeathers covered the body, not for flight, but for insulation and camouflage, another advantage for a ground-level ambusher. Every anatomical detail points to a specialist. Light bones for speed, recurved claws for grip, sharp teeth for targeted strikes. This was a predator that did not chase. It waited, calculated, and struck with practiced efficiency. In the fossil, all of these features are preserved mid-use, Claws embedded, jaws locked. Bones tensed for a kill that would never finish. The physical toolkit is unmistakable, a blueprint for ambush written in bone and claw. Predators do not all play by the same rules. Some chase down their meals in open pursuit. Think of a cheetah, legs pumping, burning energy for every meter. Others wait in silence, calculating the moment to strike. Sinosauropteryx belonged to the second camp. It did not win by stamina. It won by precision. In the early Cretaceous, the landscape teemed with small prey, lizards, mammals, birds darting through undergrowth. A sprinter could give chase, but a specialist like Sinosauropteryx made speed count only at the moment of attack. Modern analogs show how this works. The secretary bird, a ground-dwelling raptor of Africa, stalks through grasslands on stilt-like legs. When it finds a snake or rodent, it does not hesitate. A single kick, delivered at up to three meters per second, delivering 150 newtons of force, can crush a skull or snap a spine. High-speed footage reveals the strike takes less than one-tenth of a second. If the first blow does not finish the job, three or four more follow in rapid succession. The secretary bird's kill efficiency hovers around 75%. Most prey do not get a second chance. Sinoceropteryx's toolkit points to a similar approach. Its body was engineered for the ambush. Hollow bones for acceleration, recurved claws for grip, teeth for surgical biting. No need for a long chase. The goal? Get close, explode from cover, 
and end the hunt before the prey even registers danger. The fossilized moment captures this exact tactic. Claws locked in, jaws poised, the predator mid-strike. It is the blueprint of ambush written in anatomy and confirmed by wear patterns on the claws. Evidence of dozens of successful kills. Not a brute force wrestler, but a specialist in ending things quickly. Ambush predators and sprinters can share the same ecosystem without stepping on each other's toes. One dominates the chase, the other the surprise. That is why Sinoceropteryx could thrive alongside larger, more powerful hunters. Each filled a niche, each honed a method. The fossil does not just show anatomy, it shows strategy. The difference between a butcher and a surgeon. And when a specialist like this fails, it is not for lack of skill. Something extraordinary has to interrupt the script. Talons don't just happen to land in the right spot. The fossil's foot claws are positioned with surgical intent. Two sickles sunk deep into the bird's thorax, each arc matching the ribcage's curve within a margin of less than two millimeters. CT scans reveal the claw's tips are not only aligned with the prey's vital organs, but also angled for maximum grip, downward, inward, and slightly forward. This is not the geometry of a random collapse. It's the geometry of an ambush. Microware metrics add another layer. Under scanning electron microscopy, the claw surfaces show a dense network of parallel scratches, each groove running from base to tip. The depth and orientation of these marks match what is seen in living raptorial birds after repeated prey strikes, evidence of dozens of successful attacks. Some microgrooves are even packed with traces of calcium phosphate, likely transferred from fractured bone. No scavenger or accidental burial produces this kind of wear. The predator's grip is more than just tight, it is anatomically correct for a live takedown. The second digit, bearing the largest sickle, is flexed in a way that would only occur if the animal was actively clutching. Muscle reattachment scars on the phalanges show robust development, consistent with the forces required to hold a struggling, flapping bird. There is even a subtle compression of the prey's ribcage beneath the talons, visible in CT cross-sections, confirming the downward pressure was applied while the prey was still alive. A forensic analyst from the Shanghai Synchrotron Radiation Facility put it plainly, the talons are positioned over the prey's thorax in a grip unique to raptorial hunting. No displacement, no post-mortem shuffling, just the mechanics of a predator in action. The absence of scavenging marks, the lack of sediment between the claws and the prey's bones, and the pristine articulation of both skeletons eliminate the coincidence theory. This is not two animals washed together by chance. It is a crime scene frozen mid-act. Every measurement, from the arc of the sickle to the microware depth, converges on the same conclusion. A deliberate, practiced kill attempt, interrupted by forces outside the food chain. For paleontologists, it is the difference between a fossilized coincidence and the only hard proof of dinosaur predation strategy caught in the act. Ribs don't break quietly. In this fossil, four of the bird's ribs are snapped at sharp angles, each fracture ringed with microcracks seen only in lifetime trauma. The pattern is not random. The fractures radiate outward from where the predator's sickle claw pinned the chest. The force came fast, but the prey did not freeze. Instead, the skeleton tells a story of panic and violence. Wing bones twisted out of line, the shoulder joint was wrenched nearly free. Metacarpals bent backward as the bird thrashed for leverage. It fought with everything it had. The left wing is splayed, feathers ruffled and disordered, as if the bird tried to push free or shield its vitals. The right wing, jammed beneath the predator's body, shows hairline cracks along the ulna, evidence of desperate fluttering under the weight of a killer. The beak is open. Along the predator's forearm, two small punctures line up with the prey's tooth row. This was not a clean kill. The hunter got bitten, hard enough to leave marks in bone. A trauma interpreter at the Chinese Academy of Sciences reviewed the fossil and clocked the sequence. 30 seconds, maybe less. That is how long the prey resisted before both animals were erased by the ash. 30 seconds of struggle, written in fractures and bite marks, preserved for 125 million years. The predator's grip shifted mid-fight, 
The bird's body arched, ribs splintered, wings flapped and twisted, claws scratched for purchase. It almost worked. The predator's talons dug deeper, but the prey found an angle. Enough to bite back, enough to nearly twist free. This is not a story of easy victory. The prey nearly escaped, nearly beat a four-foot carnivore with decades of killing experience. Nearly. In paleontology, nearly is just another fossil. How rare is this? Only three fossils on Earth capture predator and prey locked in mortal combat. This is one of them. The others are even more catastrophic. If you want to see what happens when the script flips, when the unexpected wins, subscribe now. You will not find these moments anywhere else. The fossil record is stingy with drama. When it delivers, you do not want to miss the next act. Ash doesn't just bury, it erases. In lioning fossil beds, the difference between a slow death and an instant one is written in the details, if you know where to look. To phonomists, the forensic detectives of paleontology pour over these clues. They start with the bones. Not a single scavenger mark, not one insect tunnel. No sign of decomposition, not even the faintest discoloration from bacteria. Both skeletons are locked in lifelike articulation, muscles and feathers preserved so sharply that even barbules and skin outlines remain. That kind of fidelity doesn't happen by chance or by slow burial. It takes a catastrophe measured in seconds. The surrounding matrix tells the rest of the story. The sediment is a single, unbroken surge layer. Fine-grained volcanic ash, packed tight with a chemistry that matches high silica pyroclastic flows. Geologists have clocked these events at over 1,000 degrees Celsius. At that temperature, flesh and feather carbonize instantly. Bone turns dark, sometimes brittle, but it doesn't have time to crack or warp from slow roasting. The laminae above and below the fossil are undisturbed, with no evidence of burrow collapse or water reworking. Everything points to a single explosive event, a pyroclastic density current moving at hurricane speed, entombing predator and prey where they fell. A taphonomist at the Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology summed it up. This is not a fossil of animals that died and drifted together. This is a fossil of animals stopped mid-action, flash buried by the sky itself. For 125 million years, the evidence has been waiting. Not just the story of a failed hunt, but the signature of a volcanic execution, heat, ash, and time sealing a moment beyond the reach of scavengers or chance. Nature doesn't hand out participation trophies. In Liaoning, survival meant finding a job no one else wanted and doing it better than anyone else. Sinosauropteryx, with its hollow bones and surgical claws, staked its claim as the ambush specialist. But it wasn't alone. The ancient lake margins played host to a guild of predators, each carving out a living by targeting different prey at different times with different tactics. Some sprinted after mammals, others snatched fish from the shallows. The result wasn't chaos, it was choreography. Niche partitioning kept the peace, at least until something broke the script. Survival is the lesson written in volcanic ash. Coexistence isn't about compromise, it's about specialization. Each predator refined its approach, generation after generation, until the ecosystem ran like clockwork. But even the best adapted hunter can't outmaneuver a pyroclastic flow. The fossil is a monument to contingency. Mastery at the local level, erased by catastrophe at the planetary scale. Feathers, once dismissed as a paleontological punchline, tell the rest of the story. The Liaoning fossils didn't just prove dinosaurs had plumage, they forced a rewrite of every textbook on Earth. The world's most successful killers wore insulation and camouflage, not scales. Every museum diorama, every children's book, every lecture hall diagram had to catch up. The paradigm didn't shift. It detonated. This is the reminder. Evolution rewards innovation, but never promises permanence. For every niche filled, there's a disaster waiting to clear the board. One moment, you're the apex predator. The next, you're a lesson in what happens when the rules change. This fossil is one of only three ever found that capture predator and prey locked in a real-time struggle, preserved in volcanic ash from the Yixian Formation 125 million years ago.
CT scans and bone microware confirm the predator was an experienced ambush hunter, while rib fractures and bite marks prove the prey fought back. Forensic evidence shows both animals died within seconds, not from each other, but from a sudden pyroclastic surge exceeding 1,000 degrees Celsius. No scavenger marks, no decomposition, just instant burial. The names of both species are recorded in scientific literature, but questions remain about the exact identity of the prey and how often such moments truly occurred in nature. What is certain is this fossil reshaped our view of dinosaur feathers in hunting, providing direct evidence of both predation and catastrophic interruption. It stands as a permanent record. Mastery and adaptation matter, but sometimes survival is decided by forces beyond strategy.